good morning. Welcome back to the Southwest Coast Path. It's one of those rare days today where the sun is shining. Uh, so I've taken the opportunity to make the most of the weather and uh, returned back to the coast where we left last time just after um, the Babacombe Cliff Railway. And yeah, we're back on the coast path again, walking on to, uh, where am I going to today? Uh, Star Cross. So we're gonna be taking in uh, Shaldon, Tinmouth, Dawlish, um, and then yes, on to Star Cross. Sorry about that brief introduction to today's walk, but um, there were a few people out on the street when I uh, started the video off. And yeah, you'd think after 30 plus videos, I would be a little bit more comfortable using the camera and talking to it when there are people around. But no, I, I still get hugely embarrassed <laughs> and um, self-conscious. So anyway, we're back off that um, street now where we left the walk last time. Um, we've come along a residential area and now we're walking through this sort of coastal wooded section. Uh, we're around a mile from Whatcom um, and it's warming up very nicely actually. It's, it's, I'm feeling quite hot already. Had one small climb to get up so far. Now I'm on my way back down again which tends to be the way with the coast path. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes, I'm expecting a lot of mud on today's walk because we've just had the most horrendous uh, spring, well, and winter really, just hasn't seemed to stop raining. It's not been a very cold winter, it's been very mild, but the amount of water and rain we've had, um, yeah, and it's caused huge issues with the coast path, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, not just the muddy sort of underfoot conditions, but a lot of erosion and landslides. Um, in fact, there's been quite a large landslide that's affected my next section. And I was really disappointed because uh, I think there was a landslide on the undercliff section, uh, sort of around Lyme Regis area. And because the undercliffs is so cut off, there's no sort of escape route once you're on the undercliffs, you're committed to doing it, they had to close the whole section. So I think it was, I don't know, five or seven mile section that was closed off and uh, yeah, you know, that's a really unique part of the coast path and I really didn't want to miss that by heart. So anyway, it caused a few issues. I was sort of planning um, my next sort of through hike um, to include that bit. Then I had to re-change my plans and um, come up with an itinerary which skipped that section. Uh, there was no alternative path that they had set up for that area. So the only option they suggested was to catch a bus to skip that skip that part, which was yeah really disappointing. You know, for me, the coast path wouldn't have felt complete if I hadn't done that section. Uh, but anyway, I think this week, good news, uh, they've announced that they have reopened the section. Um, I think they've put some um, monitoring equipment along that stretch just to check for any further movement um, in the cliffs. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get to that get that bit walked before anything else shifts and they have to close it again. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, this is my last day hike before setting off again on my next section. Um, the remainder of the coast path, um, I've split into two trips, two trips of four, uh, four days walking on each trip. Uh, so yeah, around, I think it's eight, eight more walks to go after today. So yes, anyway, um, We'll enjoy today's section. We'll worry about <laughs> the next part when we get to it. I expect it to be, I don't know, towards the end of April, May, but I'm not promising anything because <laughs> I'm not very consistent with my uh, time frames on these walks. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I'm back out today. So let's get on with it and uh, see what we um, can discover on today's walk. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin Even with my eyes still closed, feel it coming in Golden, I'll follow on golden Golden, golden days Mountain Laurel High Fives for miles 
in spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird sing. Golden, I'll follow you. Okay, so a while back in the woodland section, uh, we came across the access point down to Watcombe Beach. There wasn't much there to show you because um, we were in amongst the trees there, so there was no view of the bay. Um, but there was access road leading down to it. Looks as though there were some public toilets down there as well. Uh, but yeah, we left there and now we're coming on to Maidencombe. Uh, today's walk so far, we haven't had a lot of uh, vistas or views to show. We've mostly been amongst the woodland sections through the trees, but it's been a very pleasant morning. You know, the, the birds are out singing, there's blossom in the black fawn, and I can feel the warmth of the sun on the back of my neck. So yeah, it's uh, been a lovely walk so far. Uh, like I say, next stop Maidencombe, then on towards Shouden, and then once we get up towards Shouden, I think the, the views will open up a bit for us and there'll be a bit more to show you. Maidencombe was very much similar to Whatcombe. There was a, the footpath came into the car park at Maidencombe, public toilets there, and then a short path down to the beach where I think there was a cafe, but the coast path didn't go down to the beach, so I didn't go down there and do any filming. Uh, but yeah, pushed on from Maidencombe now, heading towards Labrador Bay, then on to Shouden. A uh, few more hills now on this section, which is what I was expecting. Um, if you remember correctly from the last walk we did, Brixham to uh, sort of Babacum, Modicum uh, way, that walk actually was meant to finish today at Shouden, but it would have been about a 19 mile walk. And uh, with the sort of time of year I was doing it, I thought that was a bit of a push. So I knew this bit uh, was due to be hilly, one of the reasons why I didn't attempt to do it on the last walk, saved it for today. <laughs> but anyway, once I've got through this section and onto Timmouth, I think from there on for the rest of the day, it's fairly flat, easy going. So just coming through Labrador Bay now, and this has been the muddiest bit so far today. The mud so far has been sort of sticky mud rather than rather than too wet, uh, but this bit here, slightly wetter, slightly squelchier, and a little bit slippery. So 
this beach down here is called Ness Cove and uh, me and Lucy quite often bring Monty here. The beach is accessed through, well, they call it like a smuggler's tunnel. I don't think it's for smugglers. It's just a, a tunnel through the cliff that goes from the car park up at Sheldon uh, down into, uh, onto the beach at Ness Cove there. But yeah, quite a steep, steep walk down this field now. Um, and then over into Sheldon. And from there, we're going to catch the ferry across the Tinmouth. So we've just come past the car park at Sheldon and where you've got uh, Sheldon Zoo and the entrance through the Smugglers Cove down to Ness Cove that I talked about earlier. Uh, then you come up through this little woodland section and you're treated to this nice view looking down onto Timmouth and Timmouth Pier. Uh, so we've got to carry on down now into Sheldon and then we'll get the ferry over to Timmouth. And then we can follow the sort of seawall and the railway line um, for a long stretch now. So. Yeah, some easier walking coming up because that last section through Labrador Bay, as well as the mud, uh, there were a few hills and yeah, with the hardest bit so far of the this morning's walk. Anyway, we'll we'll go down now into Sheldon and uh, yeah, try and catch the ferry. So that cliff there is the viewpoint that I was showing you earlier, looking down onto Timmouth, where I am now. Um, but that bit of beach back there, I just wanted to show you as well, because it's also a special bit of beach for me and for Lucy, because that's where I proposed to Lucy um, back in, oh, I don't know, uh, 2021, possibly. So not only did we get married on the coast path at Mount Edgecombe, uh, but it's also where I proposed on Monty's birthday. <laughs> So the coast path now follows the railway line along this sea defence slash promenade um, up as far as I think a place called Holcombe. Now you can only use this route when the tide is low because in a minute we have to dip down off the sea defence wall and um, when the tide's in, yeah, it's cut off. So you, you can't go this way when the tide's in. You have to take an inland route back towards the, uh, back towards the yacht club back at Tinmouth. Um, but yeah, the tide is out today, so we're we're good to sort of travel along this section.
So we made it to the end of the promenade and then dipped down underneath the railway line, that section that at high tide is impassable. Now we're walking inland and we're gonna meet up with the uh, alternative route, the inland route, if the tide's in. So we're gonna, yeah, like I say, further up this little lane, we're gonna meet up with that alternative route. Right, so we're approaching Dawlish now. The coast path should be in there through a park, but there's a sign back there saying the uh, coast path is closed. This stretch actually from Tynmouth to where I am now approaching Dawlish, there's been quite a lot of um, works being undertaken on the cliffs to try and stabilize them. So perhaps it's ongoing works to help with that issue. But anyway, yeah, we're having to walk along this busy main road section now down into Dawlish. But yeah, I'll bring you back when we're down into the town. Welcome to Dawlish, famed for being the home of the black swan, which I just showed you there with, a, with its signet. I think the black swan is native to Australia originally. But anyway, now we're walking along, similar to Timmouth, along the uh, sea defence wall that's been put in over the last few years. Um, several years ago, storm, stormy seas sort of destroyed this section of the uh, train line. Uh, cutting off the southwest from any train services. This is the only train line in and out of the southwest. So when those storm waters hit, um, it under, under undermined the land underneath the railway and totally cut us off. So yeah, over the last few years, they've you know fixed it, reinstated it, put this new sea defense wall in, uh, which is convenient for me because it acts as a nice easy promenade all the way down towards Dawlish Warren. You can really see by the rock face there behind me the reason why this stretch is so susceptible to erosion. You know, the sandstone there is just getting all the elements straight off the sea here in front. And uh, yeah, you know, there's evidence here um, of recent parts of the cliff that have eroded and slipped down. Now it's very easy to miss that bridge. You're just walking along that sea defense wall and uh, you got your head down, just trodging along. You know, not a lot to look at really. Um, but yeah, the, the footpath comes over that bridge um, and then in through the car park here. If, if you carry along the promenade, it takes you into Dawlish Warren, which isn't where we want to go. So yeah, just look out for that bridge when you're doing this section. So having left Dawlish and the railway behind us now, uh, we're walking up the X estuary to a place called Cockwood and then on to Star Cross, which is probably where I'm going to end my walk today. Um, if the ferry is running from Star Cross to Exmouth, I may just get the ferry across to Exmouth and end it there. So then when I come back, I can start my walk from Exmouth, having already completed the ferry crossing. Um, but anyway, my expectations of this section of the walk weren't weren't great. Um, having you know a bit of knowledge of the area and having followed along other people's walks, 
I know this bit isn't the most loved, most scenic, and so far my expectations have been pretty much spot on, really. Not been much to show you, just walking along sort of a bridle way alongside a road. Um, but yeah, hopefully not too much further. We're getting to Cockwood and maybe there'll be something interesting for us to have a look at. So this is Cockwood and I'm sure there's a joke there somewhere but that would be far too easy. Right, that's the decision made. The Exmouth Ferry isn't running yet. Whoa. That scared me. Uh, yeah, the Exmouth Ferry hasn't started yet for the season, so we won't be getting the ferry today. I wanted to try and get it today because I believe the earliest ferry is around 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's gonna have an impact on my next day's walking. Um, but anyway, I'll work that out next time. So yeah, this is where we're gonna leave it today. Uh, Babacombe to Star Cross. Um, not the most interesting of walks, but it was a lovely day. It's nice to be out and the sun to be around. And yes, yeah, definitely some signs of spring uh, come into life now. So hopefully it won't be too long before the good weather is finally here and we can all get back out and enjoy the coast path. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching and see you again soon.